Welcome to the Hour Show once again on NDD TV. Today I'm going to have a virtual interview with the son of Warrant Officer Moses Pretingo. He is Martin Pretingo, all the way from the United States of America. Welcome to the show, Martin. Thank you, Andy. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Martin, can you tell me a little bit about your father? Uh, we used to call him Daddy in the house. Yeah. Daddy, we call him Daddy. Um, Daddy should be 78 years old now. All right. And then um, he, he joined the military to the boys' company in Kumasi. But surprisingly, um, he visited the Independence Square one time, and then there was a route match. So I think that was what kicked him. He went home, told the auntie he wanted to join the military. They banned him. They, they warned him not to even think about it. So he went to Kumasi secretly. That was where he joined the boys' company, briefly. Um, he was in a boys' company for about two months, and then he realized that his specialty was in administration. So not for him not to waste his time, they moved into the military academy to be trained as an administrator. And then uh, from there, I think his mother unit was in Hureki. But then we had two squadrons. Uh, one squadron was in Ho, and the second one was in um, Reiki Regiment, Gunda Barracks area. Uh, yeah, so he served um, uh, during Kutukan's time. He was deployed to assist uh, the secretary, the regional secretary called um, Deu. Deju, sorry, Deju. Deju. And then uh, and that was where he tasted um, political power a little. So he was always with Deju wherever he was going. And then uh, his Kutukan crew came up. All right. Well, they were detained okay. since that time. He promised himself never to get himself actively in politics. Did you ever meet the late Kutuka? No, I never met the late Kutuka. Okay. You know, my father worked with me, but I happened to meet a champo and a poof. You happened to meet a champo? Yes. But I'm sure you've had a few discussions with your father. You will get to a champo, but I just want to find out who, who, who was Kutuka? What, what has it, I mean, what has your father told you about? The late Kotoka. Well, he was a distinguished um, uh, military officer, you know, uh, disciplined. Um, the onks was fall upon him. And then uh, uh, the stage defense is his school. He had no his public record, you know. And then, um, fortunately, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't even last for about a year. And then he was toppled by another coup. You know, um, he was a disciplinarian. Um, they were the first to really, um, um, how do you call it, the first military guys to really taste power. So, well, they even know how to, there was not like history for them to look upon. So they did what they had to do within their power, you know. So that's what I know about Kutuka. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, did, your father, did your father tell you a little bit about why the overthrow of Nkoma? Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Maintaining a present at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a result in personal and business affairs is why Andy D Legal and Immigration Associate was established. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation, and so on, up to date, has been broken, and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law, and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law, locally in London, and across the borders in Ghana, where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203 1300751.
and this natural mineral water comes with a natural thirst quenching relief. No wonder it leaves you yearning for more and more. And this natural mineral water, no monsu papa. So today I'm on a plot of land, not just a plot. A 40 acre plot of land around Oyibi, Old Sasabi. It's between Ubuntu Heaven and Apollonia City of Light. You hear the names? Okay, so this particular property has good road, there's water, there's light. People have already bought this and they are putting up their structures, as you can see. Okay, so a plot of this land is going for just 40,000 Ghana cities. It's still negotiable, so just call the numbers and get yours via your own landlord. Your plot will be in between Ubuntu Heaven and Apollonia City of Light. That's the entrance to Ubuntu Heaven. And your road, you have a good road. Uh, there's light, there's water as well. You wouldn't have problem with land litigation and land guards and all that. As you can see, there are no land guards around. Welcome back. I was just asking you whether your father ever told you about the reason why they overthrew in coma in relation to Kotoka? Oh, um, in Kuma's overthrowing is a public not a public record. You know, Kuma came out with the CPP, defected from the UDC and then from the CPP. Uh, his people never liked him. You know, Kuma was so charismatic. Uh, and so therefore, it's just this old saying, if it is not us, then it shouldn't be anybody. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the UGC said, if it is not them, then it shouldn't be anybody. So how, they have to how do you mean, if it's not them, then it shouldn't be anybody? But we've, we, we also know that Kotoka uh, helped the overthrow of Nkoma, and it, it's been said on this show on several occasions. Yeah, I, I would like to correct that. Okay. Um, from the philosophical, philosophical point of view, and I will always stress on this, no military man can just own up a stadium and succeed without any politician behind it. It is public record that um, CIA had something to do with it. But definitely, the politicians have something also to do with it. And then sometimes what, 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 what saddens me is that whenever the politicians are given the opportunity to talk about the history of this country, they demonize the military. Because, you know, most of it, does, it doesn't fit their narrative. So they will, they will end up saying, oh, uh, the military never did anything well for this country. But don't forget that they are the ones that give them the money to do the thing. They are the ones that bribes them to do the thing, you see. So my goal is that if they want to tell us the history of this country, they should just tell us everything. We need it. We need it. And the next generation needs the truth. You know, after 100 years, when they are dead and gone, the history still needs to be on paper so that we can all read and know what exactly happened so that we don't repeat the same mistakes again. Yes, Kotoka staged the coup, but he was instigated to do it, and I believe politicians were behind it. Okay, all right. Now, your father was very close with the late Kotoka. Um, he worked with him. I wouldn't say very close. He worked with him. He worked My with father him. joined the military, and he was a footballer, too. He played for the Eagles. So he was all over the place. Okay. And because he also worked with the regional secretary, uh, Dejo, you know, like an AD camp, you know, so it was like, he was part of the face, you know. But after Kotoka's overthrow, he decided to go underground, you know. Um, they were mishandled. He was transferred from Ho to Reki. That's where he joined the Reki regiment, you know. And then Dejo himself was sacked out of the army. I mean, after, 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 after well, did your father also work with uh, the late Afrifa? Uh, no, no, he didn't work with him. As at that time, my father was chief clerk at, um, at the Ministry of Defense. So he was working directly with the military secretary, but not with the... Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. All but right, that's the way fine. He kind of worked, worked with Achampo some time, some time, but because of um, his football career, and uh, because of the regional regional secretary. Okay. So I remember one time, one time we were at Gonda Barracks. Uh, our building was just our building is just next to the forces primary. Uh, during a jump time, we we're doing operation feed yourself. We we're weeding 
our 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 farm, our plantain farm, and then um, Champo was going to his resident from Mankwaji, Reki Junction. My father always told us, whenever the press head of state is coming, we should stand at ease and salute. We were the only one doing that. None of the guys were doing it. So I think Achampo took notice of us. So the motor kid was coming one time at a very top speed. And definitely we were going to stand there and give the salute. So what we saw was that he rolled down his glass and then did his hand like this. He was telling my father to come and see him. Come and see because they knew each other. They knew each other, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, your father and Achampo were very close then. Or, or they just knew each other. In the military, there's nothing like we are very close. They work. They work together. Yeah. <laughs> in order to each <laughs> other as well. But let, let's, <laughs> let, let's, let's get back. At Champon's regime, during his era, how was the country like since you lived it? Honestly, um, what I can remember is that uh, military men were not respected. Believe me. But the soldiers were not respected. The soldiers go to, go to town, go to Makola number one, Makola number two. I mean, they throw you now on them. I mean, I mean, the military, there was no integrity. Like, self esteem wasn't there. No. You know, from what I saw. Yeah, you know. The military was just one of those people who were just going up and down. The civil society didn't really uh, respect them. A lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of hailed um, a champo as a man who brought to agricultural, um, agriculture to Ghana and uh, to the world at large at a point where uh, we were able to feed ourselves. Um, you leave the situation, you leave the era. Was it like that? Was it true? Oh, that sense of awareness was there. That's why I was saying that um, after 2 o'clock, my father makes sure that we all go to the, the backyard garden between Forces Primary. We had our farm. You know, we did it, you know, just to help each other. And during that time, I remember there was something we were called the yellow corn. That was the first time I experienced the yellow corn. You know, it became mm -hmm. our everyday food, you mm -hmm. know, delicacy. Yeah. So Achampo came up with that. That He's still that um, kind of um, patriotism to do something for yourself. Yeah. I, I understand that uh, his takeover was uh, a palace school. I wasn't as bloody and messy as was subsequent a, was a ones we're going to be talking about. Yeah, it was a quiet one. It was a quiet you know, one. Uh, what, what, did yeah. your father ever tell you, or did you ever encounter reasons why they overthrew a champo? It was a, it was a, it was a quiet thing that happened. Um, we could even, you could even tell the transition. Okay. You know, the only thing was that it was, a, it was a house arrest. Okay. There was not like a guy shot. I didn't, I, there was not like a guy shot. That's why when you go to when you go to the internet and you check the republics, when it comes between um, Akufu and Achampon, there wasn't a break. They mm -hmm. still team that whole system as military takeover. Mm -hmm. It was a quiet thing. It was like a continuous something, the same thing, a continuous something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe the soldiers, the army officers, and then the men will tell the difference. But from a soldier back point of view, we couldn't tell the difference. As compared to June 4th, proud to what happened on June 4th. Um, a champion's overthrow was a quiet thing. I mean, there was nothing to really. There was no hint. What happened on 15th day of May? Since we are talking about June 4th. Oh my God, you want to take me back into emotional. <laughs> That's a real thing. 15th of May. Um, I think we had just gotten ourselves ready, preparing ourselves to go to school, go to Kaka Primary School. And then all of a sudden, we saw soldiers, I saw soldiers running. That was the first time I've seen a soldier running. My father was outside, he saw the scene, and I said, you know, we have this drill. He asked us all to lie on the ground. And then all of a sudden, the Moak gave some rapid gunshot. That was the first time I ever had a gunshot. So quickly, we all rushed into the hall, you know, lied down there. Oman took up his head, wrecked the whole ground to see what was happening. He had no other choice but to leave us at home and report to his regiment to find out what was going on. Yeah, so May 15 was like that. Uh, we didn't know anything about Rawlings. Nobody knew him. All of a sudden, around 2 o'clock, what we noticed was that our father was always by his radio after 2 p.m. for the world news. You know, mm -hmm. those times we had this man called Richard Nettie. Is it Richard Nettie at GBC? Yeah. Okay. Fortunately, he's no more. He has always been um, in the face of the coup. Whenever there is a coup, he's at GBC. It was so unfortunate, you know. 
God bless his soul. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where was, what did, I mean, your father was then at the barracks with yourselves. Um, Wachijan, at the time since you were there, well, it was alleged that Wachijan led that whole process. Is that true? Um, it is public record that Wachijan had his own team of people and were planning to um, kind of do a kind of coup and then that were waiting until they all become commanding officers you know but then they were all uh, junior officers but they were waiting until they all becomes commanding officers that is maybe maybe 10 years after your graduation then it will be easy to take over that is what i'm saying that it's not easy to make a coup as a military man because you have to make sure that you have the support and even after you have succeeded the international committee will be on you so you need the politicians to speak on your behalf that's what I'm saying, that before a soldier man will stay the coup, then there are some politicians who are involved. But the politicians will not talk about that, because it doesn't fit into their narrative. You understand? Which political party do you think was or were behind that 15th May attempt then? Um, hmm. That one, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut and maybe another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hour show, by the way, you know. We, we, we say it all here. But, <laughs> all right. Now, Rollins, you said, wasn't known. Yeah. What geared all the military people behind him then? Have you see, Rollins was a very charismatic person. I respect that man. I, I'm, I'm prepared to even take a bullet for him. Why? Um, I remembered... Let the blood flow. No, I remembered. Let my people go. For I am responsible. Um, I remember that vivid statement that he made. Look, let us let us put it in this context. Okay. Rollins was a gladiator. In the arena. His life was in his hands. But you know what he did? Mm -hmm. He was able to read the psychic of the of the whole population of Ghana, proud to also the military, and then spoke. He wasn't looking at himself. He said, let my people go, trusting that that word will be able to confuse the masses. And he did it. And you see, it's, there are, it's only some few people in this world that could, even in the face of death, they could still reason and speak to influence the mass. I respect Rollins for that. He's a gladiator, you know? He's a gladiator. Why, why do you refer to him as a gladiator? I, 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 I mean, clearly, he attempted a coup that was against the Constitution at the time, and still is against the Constitution. Um, and you still commend him for such act? You see, the history of Ghana is the history of Ghana. He's not the first to, to, to do coup in Ghana. There have been several coups, certain coups that were fueled. You understand? Mm -hmm. I believe in that dispensation, mm -hmm. that was what was happening. You know? So it fell, it fell on him. Don't forget, Wachija and Co were also planning to do something. But they were looking, they were waiting for the appointed time to do it. He came out, June 15, he didn't waste time, he came out, and then he just did it. You know? Yeah. So it is what it is. That's what we always say here. Okay? I mean, but, but clearly, according to, um, I mean, even with your father being involved in the Achampo regime, as yeah. you clearly stated, there was a, a transition that you clearly wouldn't even, even notice when it came to a Kufu and a Achampo. It wasn't messy. It wasn't bloody. Um, but come to Rollins. It was quite something. What, what exactly happened on June 4th? You see, in June 4th, it would have been something smooth. But the resistance, the resistance was, the Reiki regiment itself was divided into two. Some were, were protecting, uh, some were for uh, Odati Walente, and then some were also for, for, for Chema Rollins. So even there alone, you could tell there's resistance. You understand? So therefore, there's going to be some gunshot. In proud to Achampo's case, it was just the house arrest. They visited him at home as a master. It's time to just step down, you know. But in Rollins' time, 
it was like they wanted to make an example of him. The, um, the sister wanted to make an example of him. That's why they took him to court to shame him, make him use as an, make him become like a deterrent. So anybody else who wants to in, involve himself into a coup d'état will also be shamed and then executed. But it's, let's ask ourselves this question. There's many people who wanted to execute you. You ended up and gone out of it. Right. Are, are, are you going to, are, the same people, are you going to just hand them a pie and say, okay, go home, bye bye, God bless you? No. Survivors of the fetus. What, which yeah. side was your father at the time? Oh, as I've always said, my father was working with administration. He was at uh, Minister of Defense. Yeah, I think he was the chief clerk. He was working for the MS. No. And then it was, uh, after all, we were all in, we were all in the, the revolution. We were all into it. We were the badass boys. Our parents were waiting for it, you know. You don't want to get rid of it. You don't want to be part of the revolution. You'll be executed. You'll be killed. I mean, you'll get lost. You know what I'm saying? Or you'll be fired. Or okay. you'll be asked to resign. Yeah, so, yeah, it was the order of the day. But he was very close to a champion. And a champion was executed, wasn't he? You see, um, it gets to a point in our lives that when an onus is on you, to, to steer a nation to a certain direction, you have to take certain bold decisions, irrespective of relation. And I believe um, the chairman himself, he had no other choice. Pressure was on him. I was listening to his interview recently, and he said the situation was so fluid. The situation was so fluid. And maybe if he didn't even take his time, he himself might have also be killed by his own people. So sometimes you have to just listen, just to appease the voice. Yeah. So, so that is it. What, was but it, was it indeed the true that there was a call for let the blood to flow? I mean, at the time, it was a public record. I mean, I mean, we could hear people from the University of Lebanon. I mean, the press, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was a headline. You know, it was a headline. That's part of the whole thing. Just because he said. Let my people go. That's what I'm saying. The gentleman is a gladiator. You know, he was in the arena. He was fighting for his life. But again, he wanted to abuse the crowd. You understand? And that, that was his ticket out. I believe he, he, he didn't make that mistake. I believe that if he didn't come out with that statement, let, the, let my people go, we would have been executed the following morning around 4 a.m. Nobody would have even known about him. So I respect him for that. In the face of death, he made the right call. Right. He was given a trial, however you call it. He was given a chance to speak. Yes. The generals that were executed, what he referred to as a cleanup exercise, in all fairness, do you think it was appropriate? Um, today we will sit in a luxury of peace. You know, today we'll sit in our homes with air condition, uh, in our armchairs, and then we'll look into the path. And the only thing we can see is just error. But they did what they had to do, you know, at that time. They, they wanted to set certain examples, you know. Um, some of them were in the military uniform, but they were still also politicians. We didn't have no, you know, they were in bed with the politicians, in the army, you know. When it comes to making a decision, you know, they always do it in favor of the politicians. But they were still in a uniform. Anyway, as I'm saying, I'm a soldier, but I'm not in a military. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. On, on the given day when they were executed, uh, where were you and how was the country like? Was it quiet? Was it like something that actually happened was, to Ghana? It was very quiet. It was very quiet. You know, but what surprised me that most people trooped to Tishi Range to witness it. It tells you about the psychic of the nation as at that time. In the barracks, it was very quiet. But the question is that thousands of people went to Tishi Range to witness the execution. That should also tell you the psychic of the nation as at that time. You know? Yeah. Were you guys in hardship at the time? Look. In terms of finances or what, hardship or something? Well, I believe that is what propelled that day to come into effect in the first place. 
let, let me let me be honest with you. The only benefit we got from the military or whatever was that we had a very good school. My father is a type that will not dip his hands into the national pocket. He had integrity. I can always testify for my father. I will take a bullet for my father. There was one time, my father, that was, he was in charge of recruitment. Um, he was working at PA. And then my sister went to join the um, nursing corps. My father was part of the selection board. When it was time for my sister to be interviewed, my father just woke up and left. So all the guys on the board said, oh, Cynthia, you get this job, you get this job. As at 6 p.m., my, sister, my father dropped my sister. My father made her to fail. Because my father would never condone nepotism. You understand? There was one time, um, there was one time an uncle of mine called Kanichi, who was a VRA boss at, uh, at VRA. My mother went there, was looking for a job. Just told my mother that there's no job. But today, today in Ghana, we have things like godfathers at work. People bring their nephews and their sisters and things. So you are talking about whether we made some money. No, it was not that people join the military with pride. Not because they want to make money, you know, but they just want to serve their country. And my father and most of the soldiers that I know I've seen had the same sense of responsibility and love for Ghana. Okay. You, you just stated that every coup or any coup that takes over, there is always a political party or personnel behind it. You also witnessed the takeover of Limran on 31st December. Yeah. At this point, who was behind it? That's why, that's why I told you first that I will have to have another interview again. Because this time, we are in a, we are in a political era now. And uh, I don't want to put names over there, you know, to create controversy. The, the reason why I'm asking this question is, the reason why I'm asking is, Martin, the reason why I'm asking is, he took over. There was a cleanup exercise. There was a general election. The man was installed as president of the republic. And there was another takeover. Yes. I'll tell you about the takeover. You see, um, when a gentleman handed over, this has never happened in any country. A military, a, the military takes over the country three months. It has never happened anywhere in this world. I'm here to see a country, or I'm here to see a group of people that take over the nation and then quickly have an election within three months. It means that we can have an election in Ghana within three months. And then he handed over quietly. And then he went to his place quietly in his house. But the question was that they had detailed people to be monitoring the gentleman. So let's ask ourselves. I was once a head of state. I've handed over. I'm at home at peace. Then all of a sudden, people are creeping over my wall, watching everything that I do, monitoring me, my wife, my kids. When the chance comes, I have to come back. Because it looks like you guys don't want to give my freedom. You know what I'm saying? I just let, let's be very realistic in this matter. You know, if you were rolling shoe, what would you have done? You know? Yeah. Is it just because he tasted power and he wanted more of it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because he himself, I was listening to his interview. Um, Chris, um, his, no, it wasn't Chris Pratt. It was um, Sechedu asked him. So when you got the power, oh, what did you want to do with it? He said he didn't know. Rollins himself said that. He said he didn't even know what he was going to use the power for. So, it, or, I mean, it was not his thing. But it's when the onshin is upon you, whatever the spirit will come and get into you to do the thing you do it. You know, yeah, so and that is it. Just as Achampo, the spirit came upon Achampo, he did what he did. Just as Kutuka Tufi did what he did. Just as Efifa also did what he did. So that's the thing, you know. It was a, 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 a kind of a dispensation where who was at this rampage? Who making was at this rampage, you know? And then, but then Kwame Nkrumah has been overthrown and, you know, the imbalances in the nation, blah, 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 etc. So, you know, yeah. You are a member of AFCA, a Sojaba movement. Yeah. Now, the NRC, did you think it was meaningful, considering the fact that you are now going through a process of consoling each other and uh, you mean the, yeah, you mean helping the, each other through the, the most difficult times in of fact, your lives? 
Yeah. Sometimes I guess so. I guess we're disappointed in our own brothers and sisters for the way we are going back and forth on political issues. This national reconciliation thing was a national thing. We all decided to do it. Money was voted into it. I mean, the nation's money was voted into it. I understand even other countries donated, they don't, uh, donated money to it. We wanted to bring everything to rest. But today, again, people are going into what happened into the past. So what was the point for this reconciliation? All this money and time that we wasted in this. But South Africa had their reconciliation during my Mandela's time. We don't hear about them talking about abided anymore. They are fighting within themselves, trying to get their people. But Ghana is like, after every eight years, then somebody wants to rewrite the history. Well, I mean, we need to move forward. Yes. Don't, don't, don't you think it, it is also a bit uh, confusing that Rollins will hold a June 4th celebration each year, remembering people of that torture? You see, one thing I want us to understand, that military has also played a role in this country. Mm -hmm. It's also only the politicians that play the role in this mm -hmm. country. So let us allow the history to be the way it is. You see, as we begin to block out certain part of the history from Ghana, then another regime will also come and also block yours. Let us allow the truth to come out. The gentleman is celebrating June 4th. He said the reason why we, are, we, want, we, we wanted to celebrate June 4th is because of probity, accountability, and integrity. Okay. Along the line, certain people join the wagon. Okay. And then, and then mess up the whole thing. Okay. But you see, the idea of probity, and then the idea of integrity, mm -hmm. and the idea of accountability, Mm -hmm. Can we talk about it in Ghana today? We don't have poverty in Ghana today. But it starts with him. In don't Ghana you think today. it also starts with him? We don't have accountability in Ghana today. So we are throwing rollings with the water and all the pan outside. Okay, let us just throw rollings off and let us hold on to those ideals as a nation and work with it. What do you think about it, my brother? Poverty is a good thing. Accountability well, you talk about poverty and accountability. Martin, this is a very deep, very deep subject matter. You talk about poverty, accountability, and integrity. He cleaned up the system. He killed a lot of head of states, including generals. And after his reign, there is still not that poverty and accountability, even within his uh, PNDC. Not only PNDC, so today, as we are speaking. Today. So was it worth it? Time, was it time, worth it? The other time, President Kufo was asked about corruption. He said corruption is as old as Adam. It was about 2004 something. You see, as Ghanaians or as a nation, we need to hold on to these ideals. Probity, accountability, and integrity. That's the only way the country can go for it. That's what I'm saying. Now, Rollins came up with a very beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. As time started going on, some people joined the wagon. That's what criminals they are all over the place. Even the United States here, they are here. Uh -huh. There are some people who just see the wagon and see how much money they can make out of it. Okay. So do we join it? Sometimes our spouses are even the very ones that want to mess up the whole thing. You understand? So, so the guy came with a very good idea, but along the line, uh, certain things happen. But it doesn't mean that as Ghanaians, we can't hold on to these ideals. It will help the condition. If, we, if all politicians can come out with accountability, they can have integrity, consistent moral values concerning your personal self and, the, and your neighbor, and then the nation as well, Ghana will be somewhere else than where we are now. But today, people get into politics because they want money. You know? At first, I thought the civil servants they were there to serve us. You know? So that is it. Obviously, um, you, I wish to see your father very soon, and I wish him a very speedy recovery. That is doing very well. As I just last three weeks, he he was trying to paint the house, and he fell from the ladder. So he's having a problem with his nerves. Yeah, I mean, his right hand side. But I spoke with him this morning. He's doing well. Every day when I call him, I try to distract him by just asking questions about the past, so that we laugh everything off. So, but he's okay. Uh, by the grace of God, hopefully he will he bounce back. Yeah, and then he'll visit me in the U.S. here together with my mother. Wonderful. Now, you, you are in the U.S. and in 
about 18 days, you're going to the polls. How is yes. it on the ground? Oh my God! You don't, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Republican, you know, and uh, I'm a Republican, and I know people hate me for that. But you know, as a soldier, back, you always speak against the establishment. Um, you, you, you are a thing. Republican. Tell me one thing Trump has uh, done for the black community in in America. Well, uh, prison reform. I mean, so far so good. There was this lady, this beautiful lady, who's a reverend, who has been in prison for almost about 25 years because they saw we or something in her car. Can you just imagine? Just a drug in your car. As at that time. And she had to serve 25 years. Just like Mandela. Um, um, this man tried and they, they, they got her out. And there's a few folks, there's a few guys, you know. And then... Um, Looking at the way China is trying to take over the whole world, we need uh, somebody who can speak up. You know, yeah. So you think China uh, can take over the whole world? Of course. I mean, the other day I heard that they've installed uh, what uh, a Chinese man in Uko. I'm here again. They've installed him. If they were not taking over the world, they will not come to Uko and be installed as a chief. I mean, sometimes we ask ourselves, what the hell is going on? I'm the, sorry. Your, 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 Trump promised a lot. In the last four years, has he delivered any of them? At least we are building the wall. We started a war. You built. Are you still building that wall? You said oh, we are still, we're still building the wall. I think um, we are on a three hundred mile. Yes, three hundred mile. Can you just imagine three hundred mile? Is, is, is Mexico paying for the wall, or is it you you guys are still paying for the wall? Three hundred mile is more than from where from Accra to Kuru. If I'm <laughs> not mistaken, a wall. Can you just imagine a huge wall? <laughs> You, know. you, you think it's required? Well, um, looking at looking at where the position of America right now, uh, we facing terrorism, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and 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 sometimes we cannot keep count of who comes in and who leaves, especially by our borders. Look, even in Acre, even Aflau, uh, Togo, you cannot just walk. With the gendarmes, you will punish you. To increasing you. you understand so I believe every country is every country's border needs to be protected yeah because the world today is not like the world yesterday terrorism is all over the place and because America wants to be on the on the on the international stage they need to be more careful you know yeah who would you be voting for I know it's a very personal one if you know well, it's a very personal one because um and I remember the first day when I predicted that Donald Trump was going to be president. That was someone in April. I think I was the first person to say that. My pastor looked at a certain pastor friend looked at me and said, The devil is the one speaking to me. And I said, Okay, fine, no problem. No problem. So uh, we are careful. I mean, we the Trumpers, we don't go about um, talking too much. Uh, All right. Is the well, um, I, I would like to say a big thank you, Martin for joining me today and I, I, I hope to speak to you very soon and probably to meet your father when next time I'm in, I'm in Ghana. All right? All right. But take exactly. care of yourself and of Thank each you. other. Thank you so uh, for joining us. This is the hour show and this is where time will bring us. I would like to thank all our viewers and audience around the world for tuning in to watch this wonderful show. I would like to also thank our proud sponsors Andy's Natural Mineral Water. Whenever you are in Ghana next and you want water to quench that test, look for no other water than Andy's Natural Mineral Water. We'd like to also thank Alliance Recruitment Agency. If you're in the UK and you're looking for any employment in relation to nursing, caring, chef, and any other thing, contact them on the numbers given. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye. Take care of yourself and each other.